Scheider with executive dysfunction and you. Hi everybody, so my name is Dana Scheider, like Laura said, and today I'm going to talk about executive dysfunction. This is a little bit unusual for me in that this is the first talk I've given that is not directly about tech in any way, but it does have content that I think is going to be relevant to a lot of people here. Um, relating either to themselves or to other people that they know. So my main purpose in giving this talk is to inform people in the tech community about the fact that executive function disorder is a thing. Um, many of us have experienced it without even knowing it and um, also offer some strategies and tools for overcoming the barriers that it poses. So um, Briefly, I want to tell my story, which is um, similar to that of many people with executive dysfunction. Executive dysfunction is common in neurodivergent people. I have, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder when I was in college. Um, and for years, I had this experience where I would, where I would plan to do something. I would sit down um, to write a paper, and I would do it in advance of the deadline, and I would sit there and stare at blank paper and wonder why I wasn't writing the paper. And this sort of thing happened all the time. Um, I chalked it up to being lazy. Another example is I've always had sleep problems, and to this day, I can't get out of bed in the morning on time reliably. I've had to find jobs that would accommodate this because it just won't happen. If I have to be somewhere at 8 a.m., I won't because I'll wake up, and go back to sleep, and wake up and go back to sleep. And again, I chalked this up to laziness. But I think it's relatable to many people based on the number of memes I see on the internet. Um, and so that's why I wanna share this with you guys. Um, over the course of my life experiencing these kinds of problems, I have been able to develop some strategies and identify um, tools that I can use to successfully mitigate its impact. So I want to go over some of the details of what executive dysfunction disorder or executive function disorders are and then go over some of the things that we can use to deal with them, whether it be in ourselves or in people that we have to work with on a day-to-day -day basis. So what is executive dysfunction? Um, executive dysfunction is a term for any neurological disorder that affects planning, flexibility, organization, and self-monitoring. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about what each of those things mean. Um, planning and time management. Um, some of these, I, I think, are familiar to many people. Um, doing things at the last minute, um, feeling like feeling like basic tasks are too much for you. Um, recently, I didn't take my medications because walking to the bathroom seemed like such a big deal. Um, chronic lateness, frequently forgetting things, um, difficulty making decisions. If you can, you know, if your friend asks you which bar you wanna to go to to get beers after work, you're like, I don't know, like this is impossible, somebody else do. Um, Difficulty with context switching um, or inability to multitask. Ironically, in addition to um, inability to stay focused, these are, these are all possible symptoms. As well as things like starting things and then not finishing them, um, making plans to do something and not following through, those, are, um, those can be signs as well. Flexibility and emotion management. Um, Extreme emotional reactions to changes of plans. This is, uh, if you've ever known somebody who you change plans on them and they freak out, they may be dealing with this kind of an issue. And the reason, it makes a lot of sense because if somebody has difficulty making and following through on plans, when those plans change, it's gonna be a lot bigger of a deal to them than it is to somebody who doesn't have that same struggle. So um, that's, 
actually perfectly logical under under the circumstances. Um, in a similar vein, situations where expectations aren't met aren't met. So on Saturday night, for instance, um, a friend and I were going to go out for drinks, and we were going to pick up one of my other friends who works at a bar, and she was going to close the bar early so, so that we could all leave and go to a different bar. So we went we waited for her, and at midnight she told everybody it was last, last call and then proceeded to keep serving everybody throughout the night. We didn't ever get to go to another bar. And at a certain point in my life where I was more fragile, that would have been the end of the world for me. It would have been terrible. Um, that kind of situation where you get to thinking things are gonna go a certain way and then they don't can be really difficult for people with executive dysfunction. Um, in the same way, disproportionate emotional responses in general to minor events, um, inability to control emotions and mood swings. Um, the stereotype in, uh, in that regard is probably people who have suffered from traumatic brain injuries often come out of it unable to control emotions, especially anger, and that's an, an example of an executive function disorder as well. Self-monitoring and impulse control. This is, this is a big one. So people who can't resist asking rude questions, people who, um, people who behave oddly in social situations um, or react to things without thinking, like children might. Um, children don't have fully developed executive functions, so when, um, so when your child goes up to Aunt Kathy and says, Aunt Kathy, why are you so fat? That's, the, um, that's um, an example of executive function that a child has not yet developed, as well as social skills that they haven't developed yet. And so when adults do that, it's often, it's often a result of some form of executive dysfunction. Um, again, starting tasks and not finishing them, engaging in risky or self-destructive behaviors. Um, for somebody with, in, with executive dysfunction, sometimes taking the last cupcake is not an option that they consider, it's just something that they do. Um, and in the same vein, trouble resisting temptation. Um, so the thing that I want to emphasize about executive dysfunction is that executive dysfunction is not something that a patient can help. Um, executive function fails as a result of a number of possible scenarios, and the important point that I want to drive home is that this is a medical condition that cannot be stopped on, this, on the spot. A person who has problems with impulse control due to executive function disorder is not going to simply be able to power through and resist the impulse. They can't. Their brain will not do it. Um, so what causes this sort of condition? Um, firstly, traumatic brain injury that affects the frontal lobes is going to be one leading cause of executive dysfunction. Um, the frontal lobes control the parts of the, control things like um, planning and time management, um, all of what we call the executive functions of the brain, the, um, the planning, the motivating, the directing, um, all of those things are controlled in the frontal lobes, and so when the frontal lobes get messed up, all bets are off. Um, another possibility is neurological disorders and neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's and even multiple sclerosis. Um, Patients with those often see their executive function reduced over time. Lastly, as is the case for me, people with any number of mental illnesses, such as those listed, can also suffer from executive dysfunction. And with each disorder, each disorder may be prone to different aspects of um, or different types of executive function failure. So. Um, Definitely, this is something that many, many, many neurodivergent people deal with, many people on the autism spectrum. Um, but it's also present in more quotidian mental illnesses like depression and anxiety. Um, 
things that a lot of us have dealt with at various points in our lives. So this is all interesting information, I hope. Um, but it doesn't really tell you a whole lot about what to do when you're confronted with these issues. Um, although executive dysfunction is something that can't really be confronted in the moment, it is something that you can work to manage and um, improve over time. So here are some things that I have found, both through my personal experience and through research, are effective in heading off executive dysfunction. The one big one that I really like is to plan ahead when my executive function is better. Most people go through phases where, where it's better and worse. And so when I'm in a phase where I have fairly good executive function, then I'll be thinking about what might affect my, dis my executive function, what, might, what situations might cause it to diminish. Um, lack of sleep is a big one for me, so if I'm in good mental shape, and I'm not in the position where I have no choice but to procrastinate going to bed until 3 a.m., um, then, I'll, then I'll say, yeah, I'm going to go to bed at 10 tonight, and that will help me maintain that executive function um, longer. Um, so a lot of the ways that you manage executive dysfunction have to do with the ways that you behave and the ways that you kind of curate yourself during times when the executive function is better. Um, develop habits, routines, and decision rules. Um, since habits and routines operate different parts of the brain than planning and directing, if you have a good habit or a good decision rule in place, that can make it easier to, to actually do that thing when you're struggling with planning new things or problem solving or those kinds of functions. Um, Focus on one thing at a time. Um, if you know, unless you're suffering from ADHD or a similar disorder, if you're able to stay focused on one thing, it can sometimes it can sometimes help you operate effectively with regard to that thing. And so sometimes that means reducing distractions, um, actually taking action to put yourself in an environment where you're able to focus. Um, do take advantage of legal protections and rights afforded to people with disabilities. Um, if you have struggled with executive function disorder in a way that affects a major life function, um, such as sleeping or working um, or going to school or caring for children or any of those sorts of things, um, then you have legal rights that protect you from adverse action in your employment situations and in your educational opportunities um, as well as in public public accommodations like built like businesses. Um, so the Americans with Disabilities Act, which was passed in 1991, actually makes it federal law that companies have to provide reasonable accommodation to people who suffer from a disability that does affect a major life function. Um, in the case of someone like me, that can mean that I don't have a set time I have to go to the office every day. I try to be here by 10. Um, but unless I have a meeting, it's okay. It has some wiggle room. Um, that's a common one. Um, another common one, let's see, another common one is to provide people with a working space that's more conducive to to focusing on what they need to focus on, or there can be any number of things, and it's worth looking into what would help you do your job better if this is something that you struggle with. Um, learn not to judge or punish yourself. That's a really hard one, but once you recognize that you're dealing with an executive function disorder, it's important to understand that you can't control it even though you may be aware of it. So, it's not your fault, and your job is to try to manage it the best you can and to try to get help with it to, to mitigate its impact and not to flagellate yourself. Um, finally, and this one is really, really important, um, find doctors and therapists who will help and advocate for you. 
It's so hard to communicate to people who have not experienced executive dysfunction what it is. It's so hard to convey that actually I didn't choose to sit there and stare at that paper for hours on end until the very last minute to finish that um, to you know to finish that assignment. Um, it's especially hard because often you can push through for a short time. So it, hence putting things off until the last minute. You get to the last minute, you realize there are consequences, you're like, oh crap. And then you whip something out or you know, manage to hastily go through the task. And then people are people will say, Oh, well, you could have just done that sooner. And what they don't understand is that it's extremely taxing for someone facing an executive function disorder to actually push through that. And they may be able to do that for a short period of time, but it's not sustainable. So finding doctors and therapists who will take care of you over the long term and who will help you communicate with, um, with employers and with, the, and with your coworkers and you know, give you suggestions as to what you can say, provide notes um, explaining what your condition is. Um, it's not always easy to, to find these people. It takes a lot of people a number of tries to find providers that are even sympathetic to their condition, let alone, um, let alone who can help, but it's really worth pursuing if this is a major problem for you. So how about if you are dealing with executive dysfunction or possible executive dysfunction in other people? If you recognize any of these behaviors in someone that you work with or someone that you know? The first thing is to recognize that if a person could just power through, they would not have a disorder. That's literally the definition of the disorder, is that they cannot power through. Um, be aware that applying pressure can be counterproductive. Um, for me, stress takes away my executive function like that. If I'm under pressure, it's gone. All bets are off. So, so applying pressure to someone to meet a deadline or to do whatever it is that you need them to do isn't always the most effective approach. Generally, an important thing to realize about people who are dealing with executive function failures is that they don't want to be in the situation that they're in. They want to be successful. They're, they want to be able to do their jobs. Um, they're embarrassed that they're not able to. Um, they're afraid that people will think that they're lazy. So, th so there are a few things that you can do to mitigate the impact of that, and a lot of it has to do with working with the person and asking them what, the, what they need and how you and the rest of your team can help them to to do the work that they need to do. Um, so one example is to focus on things that really matter. If, it, if, it's, if someone is getting all their work done and it's five to 10 minutes late to meetings, is that really that big of a deal? Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but asking yourself those questions in, it, in that situation really helps figure out what you need from a person and how you can accommodate them so that they can accomplish it. Another important thing is that you want to enable success, not enforce accountability. This is a huge one. Um, uh, enforcing accountability includes an assumption that people have a choice over their actions. And when people suffer from executive function deficits, they do not always have a choice. So instead of enforcing accountability by providing negative consequences if someone fails to do their work, ask them what they would need to be successful. Um, see if there's a way that other people can take on some of the things they struggle with the most and maybe they can take on more of something else. Um, you do want to have clear and consistent and reasonable expectations of a person, keeping in mind that they aren't able to plan quickly and they aren't able to change direction the way that the rest of us are. Um, so it's really important for them to know exactly what it is they need to spend their mental resources doing. Um, 
don't blame the person for their executive dysfunction again. Um, although these disorders are poorly understood and highly stigmatized, it's important to remember that it's not a choice and people have limited control over their behavior. Um, lastly, you want to focus on what the person can do. People with executive dysfunction generally are able to go through many of the tasks in their day-to-day -day lives without too many problems. And so figuring out what they can do to work around the dysfunction instead of just telling them to suck it up and power through is going to be really helpful. So lastly, I wanted to talk briefly about treatments. Um, one really good treatment for executive dysfunction is behavioral therapies. Behavioral therapies train behavior in different situations so that a person's automatic responses to a situation change. Um, so those are one option. Medications for underlying conditions um, are really important. Animals can be helpful. Um, animals can help with a variety of things. For one thing, for people who like animals, interacting with them has been found to significantly reduce anxiety and stress and high blood pressure, which are all factors that contribute to poor executive function. So somebody who can have a pet can, um, can often do better with a pet. Um, and, they, and you do have, in that case, federal protection to get housing that will let you have a pet without charging you a fee or additional rent. Um, Service animals can help you know when to take your medications. They can alert before you have a breakdown. They can um, they can create um, uh, they can create a disruption so that you are forced to leave a situation. Um, there are just a lot of things that animals, especially dogs, can be trained to do. So that's an option as well. Lifestyle changes, things like going to bed early or drinking less alcohol or um, or things of that nature that keep your that keep your body as a whole healthier will also help with executive function. And there are also finally some games such as crossword puzzles and Sudoku that have been found to help people train executive function. So those are all options for people who are seeking treatment. So that is, that's executive function disorders. Um, and at this point, I just wanted to open up the floor to questions. Does anyone have any questions? First off, um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I have a diagnosis of ADHD and depression, and uh, a lot of this sounds really familiar, and it's nice to hear people talking about it. Um, you mentioned uh, habits or teams decision rules. Uh, and habits and routines are fairly self-explanatory, but can you talk a little bit about what a decision rule might look like and how it might help? Sure. Yeah, a decision rule is um, any any kind of guideline that you put in place for yourself that when such and such a situation comes up, um, you, you respond to it in a particular way. So a decision rule might be, if you've had more than one drink, don't drive. And you know, and once you have decision rules like this in place and have practiced implementing them a bit, you you get to a point where you just kind of automatically go with your decision rule. Um, and I've done, I've come up with a number of decision rules for times when I had less executive function, or times when I was drunk or in a situation where I was going to have like diminished judgment. Um, you know, things that I would or wouldn't do, you know, if, you know, if I know that my executive function or my planning capabilities or critical thinking capabilities are impaired, I'm not going to enter into a legal contract at that time. Um, that sort of thing. Um, just, just figuring out things that you might be things that might, that you might struggle to do at a particular time and just decide in advance that that's what you're going to do, essentially. Anybody else? All 
All right, thank you. All right, it is now 7.35. Uh, if we could meet back here in 10 minutes and we'll begin the next talk uh, with Randy at 7.45.